Welcome back to In Ohio Country Today. We're in the kitchen in the house that Soy built, and I'm visiting with Connie Cahill. Connie, you've had a little experience making a lot of things out of soy that is delicious, good to eat, yes. and healthy for you. What might some of those things be that ordinary Americans might not be aware of? Well, I think we're really starting to learn more about soy, Gary, and that's really exciting for us. When people come to me and say, well, I'd like to get soy in my diet. I know it's good for me. What do you recommend? Generally, I try to start out with like a soy milk product because I think that probably is one of the best and easiest ways. You know, you can put soy milk in your coffee in the morning. You can put it over your oatmeal, your cereal, and so forth. So there are a variety, probably over a hundred different types of soy milk that are out there. It's just finding one that you happen to like, whether it's on the shelf in the aseptic packaging or whether it happens, happens to be in the dairy case. Well, you know, a lot of folks would say, soy, I tasted that 15 years ago and I didn't like it. Yes, I, I absolutely have to agree. Uh, I know remembering when I went to school and we had the mystery meat and a lot of that was soy. But we have come so far in such a really short period of time from the early 90s. We had over 200 new soy products available in the supermarket last year alone. And it comes down to, yes, it's good for me, but does it taste good? And if it doesn't taste good, it's not going to sell. So we really have seen an evolution in the food industry, specifically with soy, as far as making those products taste good and good for you. You know, I've had a friend, and I, I think a lot of people have had friends that wanted to eat healthy for many years and have been forced, uh, they forced things like tofu on us in the past. Mm -hmm. and. I guess you can fix tofu several different ways. Well, tofu is one of those wonderful soy products, really, that takes on the flavor of whatever you happen to be preparing. Uh, I just prepared a lovely Caesar salad dressing that used tofu as the base, and it was wonderful. It is used as an emulsifier. At the same token, I can take that same tofu and make a beautiful chocolate cheesecake using it as a substitute for some of the cream cheese. So tofu means meat without bones, and it soaks up whatever flavors you might have. You'll never find me probably eating strips of tofu, but I do use it as an ingredient because I think it does so many wonderful things, keeps a lot of baked products moist. In fact, I brought you a piece of <laughs> chocolate cake. Yeah, <laughs> this has tofu in it. Its base is a cake mix, all right? Then we add tofu and we add soy milk and we go and it's a wonderful, wonderful cake. And I suppose we can. Actually, actually, this is, this is, this is for me. Actually, this is for me. Uh, I think she gave it to me, Dan. Dan. <laughs> well, all right. Anyway. We'll find something else for Dan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let, let me uh, go ahead and ask. Uh, you know, a lot of this is healthy, uh, but you know, when you tell your family, "I have something healthy for you," the first thing they think of, well, maybe that's not really what I want. Is there a, a way that we can sort of incorporate, maybe even be a little sneaky and and add some soy? foods or so soy ingredients in some everyday foods? Oh, I'm all about being sneaky when it comes to this. I mean, my kids will always say to me, okay, mom, what are we eating now? Uh, edamame is a perfect example. That's the green soybean, wonderful on the tops of salads rather than a crouton, uh, wonderful in stir-fried vegetables, in pasta. I love to take and grind up the edamame into mashed potatoes and make green mashed potatoes. It just bumps up the protein content so high. Dr. Seuss would be so proud. He would, and that's one of the reasons why I did it. And I could even crack an egg right down into it and bake it that way, and I have green green potatoes and eggs. <laughs> that's great. Now, is there a, uh, after all the cooking that you have done, is there a favorite Connie Cahill recipe that you would recommend to folks? Oh, you know, uh, probably I have to admit that the the favorite recipe that I have made over all these years that I've been working with the Soybean Console is one called a strawberry trifle. It is a speed scratch recipe. It uses angel food cake from the bakery and we take a little bit of some tofu and mix it with some non-dairy whipped topping and then layer it with fresh strawberries and oh my goodness, it is a wonderful recipe, very easy to prepare and really quite healthy for you. Well, since that's not here, and since Dan is standing yes. close by, I think I'm going to maybe end this segment right now, chase him down and get that cake back. But, Connie, it's been a pleasure talking to you once again. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Gary. And from the kitchen in the house that Soy built, this is In Ohio Country Today.